second just to see people's reactions. Now oh I'm going to leave you all with that while we can't discuss that because we're too busy talking about a match. It's we so got funny Man that, and we got Mabel. That part is going to be in the very beginning of a YouTube video and that's all people are going to hear when they load it up and just go, who the hell is this guy? So we're getting into game number one here. We got Mabel versus uh, Rob. Now one of the big issues we can just say right off the rip when you just throw it, get, get it out of the way. Gyro, Laser, and company basically an instant KO if you catch him off stage. So Mabel's got to avoid being put off stage. It's Rob. But also, on the other token, Mabel is a boxer, and Rob is also a boxer. Rob's got down tilt and company, but he's also a big body, which is gonna allow Mabel to get some combos that Doc necessarily might not get any, uh, like, for the most part, because it's not the same as Mario. Paranoid Brawl as we go through this set because I feel like even though Rob's got plenty of good zoning options and plenty of ways to keep Mabel off stage, he's big. He's a slower end as well, barring a couple of buttons. So Mabel has to make the few opportunities when he can get in count. Fortunately, it's Ape Man who's breaking that first blood. And I feel like when it comes to Rob, the boxing tools kind of get slipped on in the conversation because Bear, Down Tilt, even Jeb. This character's got it all for fighting up close. Man, that, that just shows that me and you haven't talked in a long time because I love complaining about that. That down tilt is so strong, the jab and company, it's just so good. And that gyro is very start, uh, fast enough. But something we're seeing out of Mabel already off the rip is that Mabel's been using a lot of the like B reverse uh, pills as a way to kind of slowly get in. It's low enough so Mario can still walk in on it, and it's high enough to navigate around Gyro's startup toss. So if Gyro does happen to go up, Mabel's able to navigate himself in. I do like this platform pressure, though, that Mabel's consistently been going for. And luckily for Mabel, Air Dodge is right by that. Down B might do it. That is so strong. That is a KO confirm on so many characters that have a huge frame. And unfortunately, the bottom end of Rob, a little bit too big for him in that situation. Yeah, no, people tend to, like, under respect the fact that Rob is so big. He, there's a lot of potential to confirm your kills, so he's got a wide window. That's going to be helping Mabel a ton, because if Doc can't confirm kills, Doc's just going to struggle. That's not going to be present in this matchup. Even if 8-Bet goes kill for kill with Mabel, there's going to be so many opportunities for rogue situations to come up, and Doc to be able to just blast Rob. Enough. Also, I gotta correct. I gotta correct some people in chat real quick. Look, this game is all about spinning the win. There are many characters that spin and they win. Rob being one of them. That's literally Crash Bandicoot. That's what Crash is gonna do. That's why he deserves. Also, he's a PlayStation quote unquote mascot. He deserves to be in this game. But right now, uh, you know, Ape Man would love to spend a bit more time in this game. We're talking about the early game and how, like, Rob was able to put on big damage. But Maple is just. Getting a hold of that massive frame and just taking him for a whole trip. Right now getting pressure though at the ledge. Oh, where are we going? Hey, but you can't be doing that. Not at this point in the bracket, sir. Oh. No. And we can't be pressing without our ends. Just jump in on Mabel's gonna get you killed and Doom One's gonna go to Mabel. It, look, it, it may be Dr. Mario, but it's still Mario. It's still a Mario character. You navigate around them anywhere near that shield that KO presents. Best believe the book of Up Smash will be read and it will be received. The, the Up Smashes will come out and the, it's just, honestly, Mabel is... I just I just enjoy watching the way Mabel navigates around matchups that are definitely more in a situation uh, bad <laughs> for many people. But the way that he makes it work is just so impressive. Uh, I think one of Ape Bit Man's like struggles can also come into a similar thing that we saw in a skinny, is that Ape Bit is very good with a massive lead. But when things come down to uh, like last stock situation and last hit, he can occasionally fumble the pass. It does happen sometimes. Uh, and if he could just clean that up, this could be huge trouble for, uh, for Mabel. Other things we cover that we might see is uh, Ape Bit be a little bit more defensive, trying to take advantage of the few disjoints that uh, Rob has his disposal. Uh, back air, the laser, of course. Even like trying to fish out with down air just to keep some distance while staying. Yeah, honestly. Oh, yeah, there, there you go. Jump there. Call mid air. Get a solid 30. Almost getting at least like 38 out of that to get a get find up there. But still keeping the pressure on. I think the biggest thing, though, is you need to capitalize big here. All oh, does not get the reverse, does not get the back throw, and we get a little sneak peek of, of a desktop for a second there. But right now, oh, this, see, going down going down low, trying to look for a uh, Dr. Like, Tornado, whatever that down beast called, to push towards the stage and just kind of te like tech check uh, Ape Man real quick. 
I just realized the names are backwards there. It is, uh, yeah, Mabel is actually a, a Rob main now, and Mabel, uh, is going to close out that stock of the back air. <laughs> oh, great. <right. laughs> there we go, there we go. <laughs> The worst one for me is when I have the name and then, like the spot the the org, like right there, and it swaps only the orgs and not the names, and they're like, "Damn, man, I can't believe they switched orgs." I was like, I'm "Sorry, man, it's just the program." Wait, what is it? I prefer to call the move. <laughs> I prefer to call the move. Tatsumaki Superior <laughs> I love being able to reach out at home. That up smash is gonna KO right there. Unfortunately, Mabel forgets that there is a, there's a top in the middle of the stage and gets pushed away. But right now, Gen pushed off stage. What what is it you see out of Ape Man that's looking sick? Well, I mean, they're they're covering the ledge as well. What are you seeing out of Ape Man so far in this game that is working uh, a lot better compared to the last one? I think it's just the matter of like trying to wait for Mabel's buttons and trying to play accordingly. The focus on playing at a center stage, I think, is really big. And because these buttons are slow. We've seen how well Mabel can use those buttons, but it doesn't make them any faster. And so when you're forcing Mabel to be the one to initiate these situations, all of a sudden you have all the time in the world to punish. And I don't think it needs to be explained too heavily that Rob's punish game is immaculate, especially with the gyro in it. Yeah, right now covering all the landing options as well. And Dr. Mario actually has some pretty solid buttons up close. It's just like that run speed is just so abysmal. Oh, d does not get the tech chase that he was looking for. And honestly, I don't disagree with that whatsoever. You stand in center stage and you just stare at Mabel and you wait for Mabel to press a button. Because at that point, you're at 76, Mabel's at KO percent. You go for the trade or a call on a jump up smash. There's literally no reason not to do that. That was very smart on Ape Man. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that whole game too was just like firm clap back from me for it. And I think if he maintains that style of play, that just bait in, let Doc come to you and then burst him back out, he's set for this. Yes. Like Maple's yes, exactly. now the one who has to slow things down, be a lot more methodical with those buttons, try to whiff punish Rob, which is admittedly easier said than done, but Maple's proven time and time again that once he does get in, he can work that Rob. Yeah, honestly, I, I'm uh, I, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing like as this step progresses. I think this is one that could definitely go to distance between these two. Uh, it is. Oh, actually, I just got confirmation in the chat. See, I didn't call it Doctor Tornado because I felt like that name sounded so dumb that I was like, "There's no way that's got to be what it is." But good job on Mabel. Mabel just knows how to stall off stage using either the down B, falling off air to kind of delay his recovery. Very similar to what we see out of like Little Mac, but like good DI for Mabel to keep him alive a little bit longer. And also, it seemed like the the, the reflector Reflected. of the side beat. Yeah, it actually pushed a pill out. Oh, good tech from from Ape Man, <laughs> dude. Maple is so freaking OD. Just willing to go off stage in situations where you probably, for most, would die. Like, why be scared when you could be winning? Yeah. Like, yeah. Just, just gonna, yeah. like, he's just gonna press the buttons if he knows he can turn the reversal because constantly we're seeing. These dodge buttons put people in situations where they're either unable to recover outright and die, or they're just trapped off stage, exhaust all their resources, and then Mabel acts accordingly. So, like, I don't blame him for, you know, at least die. He's going out swinging if he's going to get got by you. Oh, that's your jump, though. You got to air dodge in yet. You got to down B in this situation. And luckily for you, nothing is lucky. Uh, you did end up getting a KO because Ape Man accidentally spaced that fair, but unfortunately that jump was a little bit too low. However, Mabel is getting a big lead here. How does not get the up air? That was such an important air dodge because that could have easily been like a solid 60%. Yeah, Mabel was so ready for that combo to work too. You saw my man running the program, but you don't have bit for escaping. I mean, I figure if you're this dedicated of a player to play Rob for so long, okay. and almost only Rob. Like, you know that you're dealing with a big body. You know that everybody hates Rob and is ready to take out Rob. So, he knows what he's got to work out for, but damn, he almost came through with the up air. Yeah, and again, Mabel's still pushing. Even now, 114 to the whole stock behind. Tr almost gets the up smash trade, uh, trying to look, like, trying to read an option. Obviously, against the corner, one of the best things that uh, Rob has going for him is that short hop there out of shield. But Apeit Man pushing him off stage again. You got to go to the ledge. You got Gyro near the ledge, and good job not getting directly up in front of it. And the drift off, very similar to what we see out of Luigi's, where they'll use that and fade back off stage. Gives Mabel just a little bit longer, potentially, to keep himself in the game. However, that is an up throw, and we'll be seeing it. 
Yeah, that was excellent patience on both ends, but Mabel needed to burst out of the situation when he saw that it wasn't working out. 8-Bit took his opportunity, now we're in the 2-1 count. Ajax, what do you see Mabel doing to try and pick himself back up, if he can? So, the thing is, like, PS2 is Rob's best stage. And that, unfortunately for Mabel, Mabel kind of wants that room because you want to be able to find that one opening and then you kind of cut the stage in half. You want to try and find a way to get yourself... I see the comment. I see a highlight. I see the name. Still trying to find his way into a, uh, a cameo, even when he's not here. <laughs> hey, Reggie. Uh, so, uh, you, you want to be able to cut the stage. Is it is always eternal. You find you find his way to every single thing. But it, it's um basically capitalizing big on your punishes and getting consistency of like your ledge traps but unfortunately in this matchup you kind of want to fight in center stage because you really can't afford to make a mistake at the edge of the stage because rob throws you off once you accidentally get hit by one of those fares and now all of a sudden you're in the mixer because you have to guess correctly and potentially dive to a side b or another forwarder that calls out your, uh calls out your hair dodge it's had like such a strong presence of mind for this very detail about this match because since game two he's been so persistent in fighting out from center stage like the way that he's sharpening out the plaques to guarantee that he has safe landing the way that he's always staying like if you use the pokeball as a visual he's staying behind the outline from mabel every time he can he's making use of that distance and he's reacting accordingly yeah, and that's not an easy thing to do. Uh, and oh, all right, so still has his jump, but that yep. is unfortunately mm -hmm. like does stock. And 8 man putting it out there, it's like you keep trying to go off stage against me, and I'm gonna make you pay for it. The tactical crowd just coming through. And also something we didn't talk about before was, you know, we, we talked about how Mabel had a win recently, but 8 man is also somebody who kind of sports one of the best win records in MSM Online's history that we had throughout this past year. So 8 man very, 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 very used to the situation. Oh my god! Right. He's feeling himself now. Alright, you gotta calm yourself though. You gotta bring it back. Even if you get a snap it over the two. Alright, we're getting tactical out here. This is Florida and Tri State. You already know what it is. Both of the, the energy will be met in return after somebody does something like that. And I love it. Throne? Yeah, no. You don't <laughs> have to be out there. I don't know what that arm was or was. But I'm so glad Mabel gave it the treatment it deserved. I um, am. You know what? You know what? I love it. After all that, you end up getting Spike Meta and now good. All right, so Mabel was definitely looking for air dodge back in to try and punish right there. But now Mabel's sporting, uh, you know, not a very massive lead. This is definitely like a down throw to up air with bad GI away from a KO, which could possibly happen right here. But Mabel drifts out of it. And you see, this is why I was saying Mabel, like, unfortunately, in most matchups, it'd be okay to kind of try to ledge trap. But Mabel knows, like, I can't push the initiative. I got to go back to center stage and fight there. Oh, hold on, that dash back was fantastic. You saw him shimmy right out of the grab range. Mabel's not having any of it. He does not want to throw away this lead. He's getting cocky with it, but he's feeling it. <laughs> but listen, this is Rob. Yo, time and time again, my man starts to feel it, and 8-Bit snaps right on back. Yeah, this is very much an even game. This is oh, yeah, one hundred percent. Outside of, like, uh, Dr. Mario's bad recovery to begin with, this is also a Nair Gyro mix-up away from a dead game, but you got red on your roll away. Remember what I was talking about before with Mabel's ability to tech chase? That was even a tech chase. That was a hard-ass read. It, yeah, yeah, tactical crouching. That's what we call it. That's that's the... That's the that's the uh, we'll, call, we'll, we'll call it the eSports version of uh, the Yeah, word. that's... So, <laughs> That's how we get polite about it, but there was nothing polite about the end of that game. That fair had no reason to hit, and Apit did not give it the DI respect that he needed to. My man was out and out, and now, coming into game five, Mabel looking like he's got the reads. If he could just keep it together while Apit doesn't keep the space needed, we might see another reversal in Mabel's favor. Yeah, we did just see this with the last one, you know, like, uh, Skinny, again, like, was just given Mabel the hands in those first two games. And even in the games where Mabel won, he was kind of giving him the hands, but Mabel was able to just run it back, keep his composure, and just understand, like, look, I'm not out of it. I got a lot of KO potential on my side, and I am just that good. And sometimes you just need that mentality when you play a character that is definitely... Uh, one of the more underrepresented, uh, one under underrepresented in this game. Ape it though, I did say this before. 
I'm, I'm a big fan of watching Ape It. I love watching Ape It's Rob. But one thing that can happen to Ape It sometimes is finishing his food can get to him sometimes when it's in last tech situations. And we just saw it again uh, with that last game and in the in, in the previous game as well. I mean, look, Frank, Frank, all I'm saying is I like humble checks. And I think this could possibly end up going to another reverse 3 L, man. Yeah, no, this has been a bit of a best year set because I feel like they, both players have been forced to make some serious adaptations quickly in it. But hey, nonetheless, it brings us to a game five, brings us right on back to stadium. And play-wise, I think it's going to be the name of the game. Who can keep that center stage? Whoever can hold that point, I think it's just going to be commanding how this match goes. And right off the bat, it's Mabel pushing out to the ledge and already fishing out with down B and down air. He's going to oh, dodge his efforts just like that. 8-Bit is perfectly capable of his own reverses. And we saw it. You know what? That's exactly what happened with the last game, too. Mabel died pretty early and then got a spike and brought it back and got a lead. But, the, you know, the, Mabel is not afraid to go off stage. However, for 8-Bit, you already see 8-Bit's almost taking, like, the Little Mac approach to the matchup. You stay near the side. You force Mabel to come in. You hide under that platform. So that way, anytime Mabel decides to jump in on you, it's a much more committed aerial. So this has actually been working pretty well for 8-Bit in terms of positioning. He just needs to continue to hold it. Because once you go to the center stage here, this is where Mabel gets the fight. It might be a rudimentary game plan, but I feel like Rob has all the perfect tools to really make it obnoxious for Doc to fight out against. Because like we were saying towards the beginning, he's got just as good, if not better, boxing tools. He has very notable zoning tools by way of Gyro, which has constantly gotten in Neil's way. And the laser, which has been helping Apid push towards the ledge and further off stage in a ton of situations. Between all of that and Arm Rotor constantly making these reversals at the ledge even more threatening, there's just so much in Rob's kit that makes this a oh nightmare for Mabel. But good DI's keeping it alive. Jumps off stage from, like, look, there, there's so many options that are pretty slow from the ledge, and Mabel just jumps off and throws the Haymaker. And honestly, like, I, one thing I give, like, a lot of credit to Ape Man as I'm watching this set is that he's been consistently air dodging away or going far enough away outside of positions and then gets the outfit right there. Ape Man is staying out of position to where Mabel basically can't tech chase due to speed. So Mabel needs to get a big string here or potentially another early stock. Otherwise, it's going to be Ape Man moving on. It's kind of rough business now because I feel like Mabel's forced into a situation where he's the one who's got to respond more to 8-bit and vice versa. And we saw how present this doc was when he was in command of pressing those buttons. Now, there's a pretty heavy damage deficit. The stage command has been completely in 8-bit's favor in this game 5. It's, it's looking rough for him. I'm going to be honest with you, AJ. It's looking rough. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely getting into that window. Right now, it's going to be around that same point. Remember, we saw Ape Man, I think it was game two, just stayed at center stage. Yeah, right there, just standing still. You just All you got to do is wait for Mabel to press a button because you have no reason. But Mabel's still alive at 154, and up throw is the next KO option, though. So you have to... Yeah, look at that. <laughs> just looking for the up throw. That's a guaranteed KO. So now Mabel has to stay basically counter grab game but that allows you to get up smashed at some point it's gonna be anti-air game now for ape man because you know you're not gonna find a viable throw and all of a sudden maple is starting to find a few openings here <laughs> excellent catch but one thing i feel like we haven't pointed out yet the tension's super high for mabel maybe it's kind of chilling here he's got an entire stock left to stick on and Rob on the heavier end, he doesn't necessarily have to worry about being at 111. It's dangerous, but like, Mabel can die from a sneeze from Rob at this point. True enough, but remember what I, I did? I was just, I, 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 I smell danger in the air for Ape Man. Because even though Ape Man has a very sizable lead and basically just needs to get a grab. But remember what I said before, sometimes the biggest issue that can happen with Ape Man in these sets is that Ape Man just occasionally can't get the KO. It's like, you, you definitely want to play defensive at these points because all you need is that one hit, like that. Oh my god, it took, what are you doing? Experience. See, real with it. I'm actually oh, cutting for Mabel. <laughs> Mabel might have just gave up the game. Yep, yep, Mabel went so deep off stage that that wall bounce actually just cost him the game. Trying to look for the edge guard, and even at the, the percent of 204, able to stay alive for so long, that will end up putting...